Design is more than simply looks. Design informs a user's experience of your product, guiding them through tasks. It gives structure, meaning, and beauty to the elements on screen. When creating a product, it is important to establish a design system, which is a single source of truth that allows a team to design, realize, and develop a product. A design system is a point of reference for design and code, providing a centralized place for things like type, color, and layout practices, which improves cross-functional collaboration. Design systems are dynamic, evolving with your product, and they improve the design and engineering experience of a product by allowing designers and developers to focus on hard problems, reduce QA risk, offer consistency across all components used throughout a product. And it allows for easy experimentation and cascading changes as your product evolves through various iterations. The four key elements of a successful design system and value consists of the process. This is what defines the how to improve speed and efficiency. The product which identifies and defines the what to keep things consistent. Team health, which is important in keeping the team aligned. And lastly, job satisfaction, which builds confidence and continues to grow. Design systems can be especially critical in an enterprise setting where there can be a broad umbrella of branding and a variety of different use cases. And whether you are creating your design system or language from the onset or going back and building it, understanding design fundamentals is important. Fortunately, Google's material design makes it easy to work from a pre-existing design framework that is customizable. Material design is a system of systems. The broader system is composed of smaller subsystems like the color scheme, type scale, and shape family. These subsystems allow for highly flexible but consistent applications of design properties across an entire experience. Understanding its fundamental parts makes material design easy to implement. On material.io, you can find guidance for color selection, typography, shapes, and general layout recommendations. In this video, I will focus on a common issue facing enterprise developers how to present dense and complicated information in just a few screens. Exploring these use cases will let us address high-level concepts like type, color, shape, and navigation, as well as a more detailed look at tables and dashboards. Color is one of the most critical building blocks within a design system. It creates visual hierarchies as well as indicates the intent of a feature or component. Color should be applied consistently throughout a UI and be compatible with the brand it represents. It should distinguish between elements, creating sufficient contrast between them. And it should be applied purposefully so that it conveys meaning in multiple ways, such as relationships between elements and degrees of hierarchy. In material, color themes are designed to be harmonious, ensure accessible text, and distinguish UI elements and surfaces from one another. To create contrast between UI elements, such as a distinct element of a data table, you can use lighter dark variants of your primary colors. You can also use the, these to distinguish elements within a component, such as the icon of a floating action button from its circular container. Color is also critical when used to identify different states, such as error states select colors that are different from the primary palette, and on and off states. Sometimes dense dashboards need to show multiple infographics on a single screen, each with multiple sections. To do this, you should adopt a color theme with one primary color and up to five additional colors. This color theme allows you to present readable distinct infographics. While creating your color story, it is important to keep accessibility and legibility in mind. Fortunately, the color picker is a great tool to help make sure information is readable, especially for backgrounds, imagery, and type. 
When paired with typography, color can increase both the visibility and level of importance of type. Take a look at these before and after examples of high density data tables. You can see how color creates a clear visual hierarchy and strengthens legibility. Color is your best friend. Typography is another crucial part of a design system. In material design, typography is based on a type scale. A type scale is a hierarchy of type styles or font families that can be used for different situations throughout a layout. The material type scale is a combination of 13 reusable styles that each have an intended application and meaning all the way from big headline styles to body text to captions and buttons. Working out a good type scale for your application keeps typography consistent and meaningful to users while providing enough stylistic options to create a compelling look and tone. If your app doesn't already have a specific brand typeface to use, you can choose a typeface that shares some characteristics with other parts of your brand's identity or the tone you want to convey in the app. Think about things like how the brand's voice would sound, what shapes are used in the logo, or whether your brand identity is serious or playful. More stylized display typefaces are expressive and make a great choice for big headlines and other selected moments in an app. We can see how type is applied to material components. Type is one of the subsystems that allows you to create themes for your material components, customizing them to create something unique. For example, the text on a button should be shared by all the buttons in a dialog box and tab labels. Let's create and apply a custom type scale to a data table. First, we'll look for a font that we use for most of our components. Once we find a font, we can create a theme using style tags in our XML resource file, then apply the theme to the entire app in the manifest file. You can push this even further by choosing a display typeface that complements what is already there. Choose an interesting display typeface. Specify which parts of the type scale should adopt this new typeface. We can paste in some code that tells our theme to apply this typeface to just the headline styles. If you want to create custom typography that exposes all the typographic attributes and values that go into the material type scale, you can also check out the new type tool on material.io. Plugging in any typeface will allow you to get values that you can then apply in code or in your design tool of choice, including our Figma design kits. To learn more about typography, check out our typography guidance at material.io and subscribe to our channel for more design tutorials and inspo. Shape is an interesting and important aspect of material design because it draws the eye in and conveys both ornamentation as well as action. When working within tables and dashboards, customization of buttons, tabs, etc., can give your table a more branded appearance. Pay close attention to rounded corners or the radius when creating components. Try to be consistent with the radius for certain similar elements. Reserve distinct shapes and rounded corners for buttons or to highlight something unique. That paired with typography and color can create a very distinct look for your brand and your table. When designing a layout, there are a few main things to think about. You should start by dividing your layout into regions, decide where your main content lives, and where the controls and navigation buttons should go. Make sure your layout is responsive to different screen sizes and orientations. Grids and margins should adapt to those changes as well. Make sure to check the material design documentation for detailed behavioral guidance on responsive design. For example, it's crucial to define minimum and maximum dimensions for components and layouts and scale between them. This will lower the overhead of managing layouts and give you a smoother spectrum of response. Once you've defined the grid and margin behaviors, 
Think about the internal composition, where you're putting content and components and how they relate to the edges of the screen and to other components. This will affect how users perceive their meaning, function, and relatedness. Getting down to the micro level, consider how the elements inside the components are also arranged and anchored as the layout scales. And finally, consider the information hierarchy in any layout. What is absolutely essential and what can be concealed so that it is revealed only when the user needs it? How users interact with a component should determine whether or not you increase the density in a UI. When users view and interact with large amounts of information, high density components can improve the experience. By making more content available on screen, increasing the density of lists, tables, and long forms makes information easier to scan, view, and compare. But that doesn't apply to everything. For example, tasks and alert-based components should not increase their density. Next, we want to talk about responsive layout, showing only the content that is relevant to the task at hand. Displaying a dialogue screen is a great example of this. Users may run your app on different devices with different display sizes, and your layout should not be the same for each device. On a mobile device, for instance, the screen size is limited so a dialogue screen with a lot of content will fit the whole screen. Don't simply repeat this layout on a tablet with a much larger screen. The small, mobile-friendly dialog portion can stay the same size while the rest of the screen is used for other purposes. This is a much better experience for users since the small and possibly not optimized screen can be used in a tablet setting without modification. A data-heavy screen can also require that you show it to users in different ways based on their device. For mobile users, Consider using a list to show them only the minimum content they need. A good example is Gmail. Give them the option to customize or sort the list by field. Tablet users who have much more room to work with can see the data table right away. This will greatly improve both the tablet and mobile experience while optimizing UX for each form factor. The last fundamental part of material design that we'll cover is navigation. It is important to enhance interactions using inherent native gestures. It's important to plan an app's navigation destination and their relative positions within the navigational architecture. This table shows each navigation component classified by navigation hierarchy, the number of recommended destinations, and intended breakpoints. Primary destinations are major parts of an app that users access frequently. These are often destinations that a user wants to switch between frequently or access quickly. Secondary destinations are found within or revealed by primary destinations, such as a tap bar that organizes genres in a music library or anchor links that help users navigate a long page of content. Supporting destinations are top-level destinations that are either less frequently used or exist to support the functionality of the app. Examples of supporting destinations include settings, archive, trash, and help and feedback. Supporting destinations generally shouldn't be placed in components like the bottom nav or navigation rails because these components carry size constraints and prioritize primary destinations. Another thing to keep in mind is designing a responsive navigation experience based on the device. Typically, you would use bottom navigation on mobile devices, navigation rail on tablets, and drawers on desktops. There's plenty more on navigation guidance in Material Design's documentation, so be sure to give it a look. As you've seen, design systems enable you to make consistent and efficient design decisions throughout your product. Use color in a way that helps users understand the intent. Select the right typography to illustrate functionality and importance. 
Design responsive layouts to enhance the user's experience and improve the practicality of your application. And finally, help your user navigate the app with thoughtful and selective location of buttons based on the device they're using. To know more about material design and best practices for developers, check out the link below and drop us a line using hashtag AskMaterial. We can't wait to hear from you.